I've always stated that things are going to gradually get worse, that things are going to gradually get more expensive, and that it's going to become even more expensive for you to prepare. So the best time to prepare is the present. Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a reminder that prices are not going down. Inflation is not transitory as we have been led to think. Inflation being transitory means that prices are going to go up and that they're going to level off and then continue to go up, not that they're going to come back down. And I'm sure some people are saying, well, look, the price of lumber has come back down. It's been coming back down. Ladies and gentlemen, lumber is not food. And I still believe that the price of lumber is not going to come down to the same levels that they were at before this all started. It may come down from its high, but you will find yourself paying just as much, if not more, than what you were paying prior. So stock up now. This is the time to stock up on all of those things that you need, including, and most importantly, in my opinion, food. Because the price of food, in my opinion, and from what I can see, is the thing that is going up as fast as anything else. And we all need food to eat. And this is just another one of the thousands of articles that there are out there warning you that, hey, look, food prices are still going up and they're not coming back down, not anytime soon. So instead of investing in the stock market, I'm not a financial advisor, invest in stocking your pantry because in the end, it will truly pay off. Not only will you be food rich, but you'll be eating foods that you paid a lot less for today than what they will cost you in a year from now or even in a month from now, for goodness sakes. That's how fast food is going up. Let's take a look at what this is saying. Central banks and mainstream media continue to peddle the notion that soaring food price inflation is temporary and the average Joe and Jane should not worry about it. But in a new report via the Rome-based Food and Agricultural Organization, FAO, global food prices are on the rise once again, ladies and gentlemen, and back to near decade highs. FAO released a statement Thursday that detailed after two consecutive months of declines, world food prices in August jumped due to solid grains in sugar, vegetable oil, and cereals. And this, ladies and gentlemen, I'm pretty sure it's due to all these countries that are having problems with their, with their weather, where their foods are either being frozen or where their foods are too dry, where the environment is too dry to grow foods. But let's read on. FAO Food Price Index, which follows international prices of globally traded food commodities, averaged 127.4 points in August, up 3.9 points or 3.1% from July and 31.5 points or 32.9% since the same time last year. In August, the most significant driver of food prices was FAO Sugar Price Index, which jumped almost 10% from July, just in one month, due to the frost of damaged crops in Brazil, the world's largest sugar exporter. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, I was talking about this the other day. What is China going to do once all of these countries that it imports from cannot import from them anymore because they're only growing enough for their own country? What are all these other countries going to do that, that depend on imports? For example, the continent of Africa depends on, I think, about 50% of the food that it consumes on imports. Whereas a few years ago, just a few years ago, how fast things change, ladies and gentlemen. Just a few years ago, Africa was pretty much food independent, meaning that they did not really have to import sustenance in order to feed their nations. And now they're importing about 50% of what they need on an annual basis. The second largest jump in the basket was the FAO Vegetable Oil Price Index, which rose 6.7% last month. As international palm oil prices soared to historic highs because of below potential production, the FAO Cereal Price Index increased 3.4% in August versus July, 
The meat index edged up slightly in August and the dairy index sunk. A combination of global droughts, volatile weather, labor shortages, and supply chain disruptions persisting from this health crisis, among others, have contributed to the rapid rise in food prices over the last year. Now, ladies and gentlemen, do you really see things getting any better as far as shipping, as far as labor goes? Even if everyone that is not working right now goes back to work tomorrow, do you think that they're going back to work for the same pay or for higher pay than what they were being paid before? They have now grown accustomed to receiving a certain amount of money. And you see McDonald's and these service sector jobs actually increasing the pay in order to attract more people to come and work for them. Well, that is going to go ahead and turn over onto the things that we purchase. Higher salaries mean higher costs for companies, corporations, whatever you want to call it. And those higher costs to them will be passed down to us, the end consumer, no matter what it's, what it's for. It could be for a car, it could be for a bagel. Those costs are going to be passed down to us. In addition to that, I think I spoke about this during our last, last live stream. And I apologize for that last live stream, ladies and gentlemen. Internet reception here was terrible that day. However, I digress. Uh, those costs are going to be passed down to us, including the cost of higher taxes. So everything is culminating into a big snowball. And ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have to eat that snowball. The corporations are not going to eat them. Think about it. If a corporation has an expense of X, and they cannot recoup that expense, it comes off their bottom line. Well, I believe that there's a formula out there that a business uses where they say, if we're not profiting at least this much, if we're not making at least this much, then it makes no sense for us to stay open. So for them to continue to be able to do business, they're going to have to pass on that cost to the consumer. And when it comes to food, that is something that people cannot live without. So people will have to pay whatever they are being charged for food. If you go to store or supermarket A, B, and C, and they're all charging the same amount for that box of cereal, you have two choices. You either buy that box of cereal or you don't buy it and you go on to something else that's cheaper or less expensive. But most people, ladies and gentlemen, will buy it because they need it. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. This is what we've been talking about. I talked about this probably a couple of months ago. I said something about make sure you get prepped before this winter or by fall. Heading into fall, soaring food inflation shows no signs of abating and may worsen. It's not that it may worsen, it's that it will. I've noticed that when industry managers or CEOs go on the mainstream media and say, yes, food prices are going to go up starting October by another 15%. That's the only time that they tell the truth. That's the only time they tell the truth, ladies and gentlemen. Food prices are going to be going up starting in October by at least 15%. Many major industries have stated this. The one that comes off of off my head, off the tip of my head is, uh, I believe it was Tyson Foods that was saying, starting in October, food prices are going to go up be between 11 and 15% or something like that. This may cause socioeconomic turmoil in emerging market economies, mainly because people in those countries allocate more of their daily budgets to food. Now, when we talk about emerging market economies, usually we talk about like third world countries, like India, like some countries in South America, uh, like some countries in the Middle East, etc. But ladies and gentlemen, think about it. Here in the United States, we're almost becoming a third world nation or like a third world nation, where people are making just enough to survive, where people are spending most of their income on housing and on food. And that's what they're talking about here. When a person or a family spends 40% or more, and this is a study that was done a while back, when a person or a family spends 40% of their income or more just on food, people start getting angry and they start doing bad things. Albert Edwards first warned about soaring food inflation last December, ahead of the big rally in food prices. 
in a note that we titled Why Albert Edwards is Starting to Panic About Soaring Food Prices. He said a driver of food inflation has been the global central bank's ultra-loose monetary policy and warns about uprising in underdeveloped nations. And as I stated before, we may not be an underdeveloped nation, but we certainly are acting like one when it comes to how much people make and how much they have to spend on things that they need just to live. So ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you what. If you're in a position where you can't just go out and stock up as much as you can, get a second job. Go ahead and get a side hustle, whatever it may be. And put yourself in a position where when food prices are 50% more this time next year than what they are now, that you'll be eating that food that you bought today at these prices instead of the elevated prices that they will be at in a year. And they're already at elevated prices. I've always stated that things are going to gradually get worse, that things are going to gradually get more expensive, and that it's going to become even more expensive for you to prepare. So the best time to prepare is the present, and continue to prepare. Slow and steady wins the race. I like to preserve a little bit of my wealth, excess wealth, and precious metals. And I do something that is called dollar cost averaging. Well, you can dollar cost average into food as well. Do payday preps. That's how you dollar cost average into food, by doing payday preps. Every time that you get paid, you set a budget, you set a certain amount of dollars that you're saying, this is going to be for my preps. And when you go to the store, you get what you want to get. And you put it away. And I don't care if I go to the store this week and pasta is $1.25 a pound. I don't care if I go and pasta is 69 cents a pound. I'm still going to get five pounds of pasta. Or I'm still going to spend this number of dollars on pasta to put away this week. All right, ladies and gentlemen, because I am very surprised that, you know, some of these long-term food storage companies haven't really raised their price a whole bunch. We've seen a lot of prices go up. And I saw a video from the Canadian prepper here a couple of days ago where he pointed out that even Mountain House is having shrinkflation. Why, ladies and gentlemen? Because they don't have a choice. If they want to stay in business, they're going to have to recoup those funds that they are spending in excess of what they used to spend in the past in order to be able to continue to offer you that product. One of the reasons why I'm stocking up on Nutrient Survival, which by the way, shameless plug, the best long-term food storage in the market, period. The most nutrient-dense and the best long-term food storage in the market. But the reason why I'm stocking up on that is because I even told Becky over there, my rep at Nutrient Survival, I said, I'm afraid of two things. Because she asked me, why are you buying so much Nutrient Survival? I, I think maybe she thought I was selling it on the side. But she said, well, I said, because number one, I think you're going to have problems resourcing the ingredients that you need in the future to go ahead and produce what people are actually wanting to buy from you, number one. And number two, Ladies and gentlemen, I'm surprised they haven't already raised their prices more than what they are now. So if you are looking for some nutrient survival, we're having a sale this week. I say we, I'm not even part of their company. I'm just an affiliate. But they are having a sale. And if you use my code AP10, you get 10% off anything in the nutrient survival store. And of course, many of you probably already know, if you watch my channel on a regular basis, that they came out with what is called an Alaska Prepper Preparedness Kit. And it's a great deal where you get six number 10 cans of my favorite entrees and my favorite dessert for the best price that they've ever offered. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so take advantage of that now, especially if you're looking to put away long-term food storage. Some people may not be at that part of their preparedness plan, but if you are, consider getting some of that because nutrition, in my opinion, is a lot more important than calories when it comes to survival. All right, you can get rice and beans and things like that to go ahead and supplement with your nutritious food because rice and beans are what are calorically dense calorie maintenance foods. You can get some of those things to go ahead and maintain your caloric needs, but then mix it in with real nutrient foods that will provide your body with all the nutrients that it needs on an everyday basis. Food inflation globally has been ultra low for the last few decades. 
but now food prices are soaring so get it now while you can ladies and gentlemen if you have to drop your cell phone plan from the two hundred and seventy dollar a month plan that you have to the seventy dollar a month plan that has the bare essentials the bare things that you need then go ahead and spend that extra money on stocking up on food and all those things that you need on an everyday basis think about getting a small medical kit a small first aid kit just the basics if you don't have it just start out with getting the basics and once you progress to having a stockpile of things that you need that will last you a certain number of months in my opinion at least a year is what is required in order for us to make it through a long crisis once you do that then start fanning out start diversifying what you have put away other than that ladies and gentlemen I hope this helped someone I hope this woke someone up to the fact that we need to prepare and that we need to prepare right now remember to be good to each other when good people do good things good things happen remember to reach one teach one and repeat if we all did this the world would be a better place and you know that it will be a better place many blessings to all of you and your families I'm Alaska Prepper and I'm out God bless if you're at that part of your prepper preparedness plan where you are now starting to put away long-term food storage then consider nutrient survival this is the best and most nutrient dense long-term food storage in the market I consume this on a regular basis every day just for the nutrients because it is such a good product now when I say this ladies and gentlemen I mean it feed your freedom with nutrient survival